It's Thursday, June 18th, and this is now on HNN. It spreads quick, and the mortality rate for our Kapuna is over 14%. A late-breaking update on a COVID-19 cluster at the state's largest nursing home. It worries me. Today's talker, California's governor issues a statewide order for people to wear face coverings. This as a passenger gets kicked off a flight for not having a mask on. This is insane. I mean, it's literally, these people have gone Absolutely not. One day to go until bars can reopen on Oahu, but some will be missing their main attraction. We need live entertainment. Plus, we'll tell you why people are protesting on the windward side today. These stories and when the next season of Stranger Things will drop on Netflix. Coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon, the time's now 12.43, and this is now, I'm your director, Jonathan, alongside Mahea in for Ashley today. She's got some new numbers from the Department of Health. We saw a big uptick in coronavirus cases. That's right, Jonathan. The state is reporting 18 new COVID cases Thursday on Oahu in the it's the biggest single day jump in two months. Now the spike comes after several days of smaller gains, but as public health officials continue to track clusters in central Oahu, Honolulu, and at a skilled nursing facility in Makiki. Casey Lund has the latest. A very serious situation for the residents and the staff here at Hale Nani in Makiki, the state's largest uh, skilled nursing facility. Last night we had the numbers of those five confirmed cases, four residents, one staff member, but Scott, uh, Dr. Scott Miskovich, Miskovich is with us uh, today. Um, we have some new numbers, some updated information. You told us yesterday we should probably expect there would be more cases. Is that the case? Uh, yes, it is. So right now I'm able to report there are a total of seven patients that are positive and uh, three staff that are new positive. Now that's not counting the one staff member who was the original asymptomatic that was believed to have introduced it in. So we have 10 total now, uh, three, uh, three staff and seven residents that are positive. Scott, I know that you've been on conference calls all morning long. Yes. You just came there because you wanted to be respectful of the people that live there, the that's management right. who you say are doing their very best to contain this. What is the action plan right now? Um, actually, that's what we've been dealing with. And uh, I can only say I'm impressed with everything and all the cooperation that is going on. The, um, the team here is very calm, which is great. They are, they are working very effectively in creating um, an expanded isolation ward because when you have positives, you have to have these people isolated. So that's being done. I just got off the phone with experts that did Kirkland, Washington, and they're in San Mateo, uh, San Mateo County. So I'm now working with experts on discussing the isolation wards. And so we're using best practices. Uh, we have a conference call coming up with some of the leadership with Department of Health and uh, myself, some of the other medical directors, and also Hyema will be involved. So basically everybody's putting their heads together to do the best thing we can for it. And I would also like to emphasize right now, everything is contained within one unit, okay? This one unit has 17 total patients, so those seven uh, positive were coming from that one unit. The staff that are positive, except for one, is all from the same unit, so that's a very positive sign. The rest of the facility, we've also tested. I have all the tests back on all the other residents because we've been in 24 hours testing everyone. We're finishing up a few of the staff right now, but by the end of the next hour or two, the entire facility will have gone through testing and they're all negative. And really quickly, just to recap, 10 total at the facility, right? including last night's numbers, we have seven residents and three staff. Correct. Right. Very good. Thank Correct. You. Dr. Scott Miskovich, uh, thank you so much for, again, what you're doing in the time that you've um, taken to share with us. Thanks. For Thanks now, so. we'll send it back to you guys, Jonathan and Mejia, in studio. State and city leaders now say to open up travel to out-of-state visitors, we need more testing. But a potential program to test all incoming visitors is still not in place. Congressman Ed Case says he's working with the federal government but still does not have a clear timeline. This morning, he was on Sunrise to talk about it. Do you think that we'll be able to see a recovery of our economy anytime in the short term? 
Well, I think the honest answer is no in the short term. I mean, you know, we are still in a, a world of hurt. I think everybody here knows that. Uh, we've been trying as hard as we can as a delegation to make sure federal funding comes to Hawaii to help out. We are somewhere around $7.5 billion of federal aid, which has helped. Uh, but our economy is nowhere close to full recovery or even halfway recovery. And so, you know, although I think we have been trying as best as we can pretty well, frankly, to get through just that survival stage for the first couple of months, you know, now we're in a, trying to make sure that we're in a stable stage and we're not out of the woods yet on either COVID-19 uh, or, or on the consequences from the economic side. So it's going to be a tough road. But I think the road is a, is a road that um, uh, where the, the steps are pretty clear as to what we need to do to continue to reopen slowly, uh, carefully, safely, and not go back into a, a, a situation like we're seeing in states like, you know, Florida and Texas, where they, they just reopened precipitously, and they're paying the big price for that now. So not only are they having a public health crisis all over again, but they're seeing their economies tank. And that's certainly got a lot of people talking today. You know, in California, where they're also seeing a big increase, the governor there is requiring everyone to wear a face mask. He just issued that order hours ago. Nichelle Medina has more on what's happening across the mainland. More than 4,000 people in California tested positive for coronavirus Wednesday, according to data compiled by San Francisco's Chronicle newspaper. That's a new record for the state that's mostly now open for indoor dining, gyms and hotels. Some businesses have decided it's too soon to open up. Rolling speeding and action. That includes the CBS daytime drama, The Bold and the Beautiful. After one day back on set, the show's producer decided to stop shooting and allow for more testing. In the city of Claremont, Troy's family restaurant opened, but then closed their doors for good. We thought we saw a light at the end of the tunnel, but it turned out that was a train. Florida also posted new high numbers, over 3,000 cases in one day. Masks are now mandatory in the Florida Keys, where there are few hospitals. Cases are also rising in Texas, but authorities there announced students will return to their campuses for in-person classes this fall, and masks will not be required. We all expected to see more cases. What I think has everybody concerned is how rapidly they're increasing. North Carolina health officials announced more than 800 people are hospitalized, and the state continues to set one-day hospitalization highs. In Arizona, where cases are on a steep incline, the governor gave the green light to local officials to make masks mandatory. United Airlines is also ramping up its mask policy. Any passenger who refuses to wear one throughout the flight will not be able to travel with United. Most airlines require masks, but haven't revealed punishment for customers who don't comply. President Trump vowed, regardless of spikes, the country will not shut down again. It's fading away. It's going to fade away. But having a vaccine would be really nice, and that's going to happen. New York's governor slammed the federal government's handling of the pandemic. It was all political. It was all public relations. Based on what fact? Based on what science? None. Governor Andrew Cuomo also issued an executive order. Restaurants and bars that violate guidelines can have their alcohol license suspended. Nishal Medina, CBS News, San Diego. American Airlines says a passenger was removed from a flight Wednesday for refusing to wear a face covering as required by company policy. It happened on a flight from New York to Dallas. The airline says when Brandon Starka declined to wear a face covering, he was asked to deplane. According to American, after a long public rant, he got off and the flight departed. The whole staff is just standing around me, intimidating me, saying, you're keeping everybody waiting, you're keeping everybody waiting. And I'm like, I, this isn't a lot. This is not a thing. I don't have to do this. I've never had this happen before where I was told it was the law and they took me off the plane. So I get off the plane. This is insane. I mean, it's literally these people have gone absolutely nuts. We have new information about the meeting that took place between Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Chinese officials. Lacey Denise has the details. New details are emerging about the Hawaii meeting between Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and his Chinese counterpart. They met yesterday for about six hours at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam until about 4 p.m. 
Secretary Pompeo reportedly pushed China to reveal everything it knows about the coronavirus outbreak. He also discussed the country's trade relationship. The Chinese diplomat expressed, quote, strong dissatisfaction over new legislation to impose sanctions and to ban visas for some Chinese government officials. President Trump signed the bill to punish China for its persecution of Muslim minorities. All right, thank you, Lacey, so much for that update. We want to get switch gears here just a bit and take you outside. Look at that lovely shot of Aloha Tower there. The time's now 12.52. we got Guy Hoggy on deck with a look at your weekend forecast. How's it on this Thursday? I'm Guy Hagi with your HawaiiNewsNow.com forecast. We'll see the typical trade wind weather pattern continue today and for the next several days. That means early morning and overnight showers, although right now there's not a whole lot of rain. We are expecting some showers to move through from time to time. And the rain will mainly focus on the windward sides with light to moderate rainfall totals. But because the trade winds will run breezy, some of those showers might drift over the mountains to leeward areas. But really, we're not talking about a whole lot of rain. And the lighter winds will continue over in Kailua Kona, so it's going to be sticky there. We don't have to worry about humidity levels elsewhere because those trades will run at 15 to 20 miles an hour today and for the next several days. And with all the sunshine, temperatures running into the upper 80s for some leeward spots. Now, the surf that came up yesterday for south and southwest shores will be dropping today. Still going to have some head high sets, but definitely the energy is waning uh, and the UV index is at 11. So if you plan on going surfing today, a slather on the sunblock, you will need it. Now over on the U.S. mainland, well, it's going to get warm out there. Uh, Phoenix going to get up to about 106 today. Ooh, 106, man. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. Lucky we live Hawaii. Thanks, Guy. We're following developing news. There's a peaceful protest this morning on Johnson Road off Kamehameha Highway in an area known as Hakipu'u on the windward side. About 30 people are there and say they're upset that a landowner uncovered a cesspool, which apparently caused a sewage spill last week. Now they say there are EV or ancestral bones in the area. Police are aware of the protest and say it's peaceful. We do have a crew on the scene and we are still gathering details. Yeah, Rick Dagsog's there right now, so we can update from him coming up today at 5 on H&N. I want to talk about another developing story. It's over in Oklahoma. That's where more than 100,000 people are expected to gather this weekend for Trump's first in-person rally in quite some time. It's also the city's Juneteenth celebration. We got Omar Villafranca there and gives us an update. The line to get into the president's rally continues to grow. You can see behind me there's about a dozen people that are in line and they're starting to camp out next to each other and that is a concern because here in Tulsa County they've seen the biggest spike in cases in people between 18 and 34 years old and between the president's rally the counter protests and the Juneteenth celebrations they're expecting to see a lot of people in that age group Oklahoma is one of 18 states that has seen an increase in cases in Texas hospitalizations are up 85 percent since Memorial Day and Arizona's seven day average rate of positive tests is over 17%. That's nearly four times the national average. The Trump campaign is requiring ticket holders to sign a waiver saying they will not sue if they contract the coronavirus. And those that are going inside the rally, they will have their temperature taken, they will be given sanitizer and a mask, but it is not mandatory to wear that mask inside the arena. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, Mahir, let's take a look at what's happening around the world on social media. Have you seen this yet? Are you a Stranger Things fan? Have you watched? No, I haven't, but oh, man. let me know. I it's gotta so catch good. up. Well, we're awaiting season four, and it has some bad news, folks. So if you're like me, awaiting season four, we're hearing several reports saying we're gonna have to wait. It was supposed to come out July 4th, and now, like I said, several reports saying it won't be released until 20. 21. Oh, no. no. That's an issue for a lot of television shows because they can't get together and film at this time. it out. No. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think we're seeing a lot of things that if they did have it in the can, they're releasing it. So we'll have to. I, it's a big cliffhanger that would happen in season three. We're waiting to see if a <laughs> big character comes back or not. Uh, oh, you'll just have to watch Tiger King over and again, over and over again. And again and again and again. All right, so everyone's always complaining about air traffic seats, air travel seating. 
Yeah. What, can you tell us about that, an update there? Well, there actually may be a solution in the middle of our pandemic. Could double-decker seats be the future of airplane travel? Oh, That's no. one man's vision as he reconfigures plane cabins to give flyers more protection from the spread of COVID-19. Now, his design puts double-decker seats in the space between a standard seat and an overhead bin. The seat <laughs> lays flat and gives privacy. They're called Zephyr seats and they're designed by Jeffrey O'Neill and his partner. O'Neill says Zephyr seats would allow the majority of global airlines to maintain the same density offered by their existing premium economy cabins. He says they could be a game changer in the wake of the pandemic. Now the idea is still in its infancy. Passing the product through the required safety test could be a three-year process. O'Neill says he's been talking with some major airlines, but there's no firm commitment yet. I don't know about this. Because could you imagine there being turbulence and they go to your seat and your climb up a ladder there. Wow. Well, you know, know, people have been complaining just how the seats have been so small. compressed. So, so small. maybe in the future we're going to see wider seats and more space. Yeah. All right. So we got another update regarding social media. We're talking Twitter. They That's got some right. Updates. Twitter is introducing a new feature and it's called audio tweets. In the coming weeks, all iOS users will be able to create tweets with their voice. Now, critics say this could open the door to new forms of abuse, including verbal harassment, spreading hateful content via audio that could be harder to detect initially. Now, Twitter says it's working to incorporate additional monitoring systems ahead of the rollout. The company also says it would review any reported voice tweets and take action if necessary necessary users will not be able to use audio to reply to voice tweets well pal hana is back starting tomorrow that's because bars here in town can reopen but you might be missing one main attraction chelsea davis explains live entertainment is allowed with the exception of singing and wind instruments many singers have been performing online with virtual tip jars but they say it doesn't even come close to what they need to survive you actually can sing with the face mask on. 18-time Nahoku Hanohano Award winner Amy Hanayali'i disputes Honolulu Mayor Kurt Caldwell's statement that you can't sing wearing a mask. The mayor has allowed bars and restaurants to reopen, but has banned live entertainment, saying singers have a better chance at spreading COVID-19. Singing in a enclosed space uh, is troubling. And how do you protect again? Of course, wearing a face covering does not work if you're, you're singing. Hanaya Lee says musicians are struggling right now, but they can social distance too. She's offering solutions so they can go back to work safely. All you'd have to do is something simple, like all the nail salons, Kaiser, the banks, they're all putting up plexiglasses. And it's super, super easy. Entertainers can be six feet, 10 feet, 15 feet away from whoever's in the audience. At Liko's Tap and Table in Hawaii Kai, they rely heavily on business brought in by local performers. We need live entertainment. Live entertainment brings in a lot of customers and it's always been really busy here, so definitely would love to have live entertainment back. I think you can still be safe and have a guy or two playing guitar in your establishment and still keep people six feet apart and make it work. And these guys are hurting, they're out there not working a lot, so we can't wait to be allowed to have them back and there's a way to do it safely. The city's ban also puts a stop to karaoke, but there is no order for church choirs. Hanaya Li'i is sounding the alarm and hoping the mayor hears her plea. I really encourage um, Mayor Caldwell to really reconsider this. Call me, I can talk story with you about it. For all I've been blessed with in my life, there was an emptiness in me. You can sing with a mask on, it's not hard. Now it's unclear when singing at public venues will be allowed to resume. 
Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. All right, point proven. You can sing with the mask on. Amy Hanaya Lee, yeah. she can hit those high notes even, even with the mask. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All the way. Let's get to some other entertainment news. That's right. How much would you pay for a date with an A-list star? Keanu Reeves, star of hits like The Matrix, and John Wick is putting himself out there for a socially distanced date with one of his fans. The 15-minute Zoom call is being auctioned off to the highest bidder. Proceeds go to the Camp Rainbow Gold, a children's cancer organization. At last check, the top bid was near $20,000. Now to learn how you can place a bid, go to Camp Rainbow Gold's website. And as Ted from Bill and Ted would say, Excellent! Excellent. <laughs> yeah, look at that. We're playing that, folks. We got it. I love Bill and Ted, though. And it's yeah. making a comeback, too. They're doing a reboot. Yeah, it's a great cause. Why not? You get a Zoom date for 15 minutes. For 20 grand. All right, coming soon to the road near you, a new Mustang. Ford is bringing back its iconic Mustang Mach 1. The original 250 horsepower Mach 1 was introduced in 1969, and just like that one, the new limited edition car is a version between the standard Mustang and the much more extreme Shelby Mustangs. But the new Mach will have a version of the Mustang GT's 5.0 liter V8 engine and produce 480 horsepower. Ford has not introduced how fast the car will go, but it it will no doubt be super fast. The body will be decorated with distinctive racing stripes and a special Mustang pony badge in the center of the grille. Buyers can choose either a six-speed manual transmission or a 10-speed automatic. Now, we don't know the price yet or how mm. many of these cars will be produced, but Ford says the new Mach 1 will be available at dealerships next spring. That grill there does have a lot of personality. It almost looks like a face. I love it. It sure yeah. does. Yeah. And remember, if you buy one and you bring it here to Hawaii, you still have to drive at the speed limit. Yes, yes, very important. All right, and today's a special day for all our fishermen out there. Fishermen say a bad fishing day still beats a good day at the office, but on Thursday they'll have an extra excuse to swap work for baiting a hook. June 18th is National Go Fishing Day, and to celebrate it, just drop a line in your favorite lake, river, or whatever body of water floats your fishing boat, or okay. do the same thing from the shore and have fun. You can also post pictures on social media using the hashtag, hashtag National Fishing Day. Hey, I haven't been fishing in years I don't know just go by a stream you can get lots of tilapia and they're really <laughs> easy to get <laughs> all right guys that's gonna do it for this is now today on this Thursday guess what tomorrow is TGIF Friday we'll, yes it's here we'll be here for sure and that will be at noon tomorrow today we'll bring you a bunch more updates as Mejia mentioned we are monitoring what's going on with that protest on the windward side so look for that update coming up at 5 on HNN we'll see you tomorrow folks